I bought a refurbished digital PS5 from GameStop for $380, and in this video, we're gonna take an in-depth look at it and see if they actually refurbished anything. They sent it in the classic giant GameStop box. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. Now, inside of the shipping box, they have their classic GameStop box for their pre-owned refurbished consoles. I also got my packing slip that says 380 bucks on it, including tax and everything. Um, and down here, it does say digital PS5. But I also like to do a little test here where I slide it back and forth and Okay, there's actually not, not much of anything sliding around, which is very surprising for a GameStop box. Usually there's a bunch of uh, loose parts sliding around, but it's good that there's not in this one. Let's go ahead and slice it open and see what's inside of this box. And if you guys remember a few months ago, I bought my first refurbished PS5 from GameStop and that thing was disgusting. I'll, I'll throw a link up on the screen if you want to check that out after this video, but let's go ahead and see what's in here. We've got our big white box, which should have all of our accessories. And of course we have our console down here, which we'll take a look at in a second. And uh, I'm very curious to see if they used Magic Eraser on this console. I've, I see it on like 90% of the refurbished stuff, but there's actually been a few consoles where they didn't use Magic Eraser on refurbished stuff, which was weird. So here is our Sony PS5 system setup. And these setups are, have actually gotten better from GameStop. Like they're very detailed and like frankly, like pretty good setup guide. And uh, we've got our USB-C cable and that actually looks like the, uh, the original zip tie that came with it. Um, let's see, that's not a zip tie, that's a twist tie. Also got a power cable and your HDMI cable. And like surprisingly, all these cables look like the OEM cables, which is kind of weird. Usually GameStop just throws in random stuff. We've got our stand here. Let's see if they included the screw. Uh, if I can twist this thing open. And yep, they have the screw. And I just noticed that the stand is slightly different than the uh, the disc version, which makes sense. I've never actually used a digital version, a digital PS5. I only, uh, I've only had uh, disc versions. So let's go ahead and take a look at this controller as well. And at first glance, this looks decent. Um, looks well loved. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They took magic eraser to this thing. Let me, let me zoom in on this. All right. So first of all, like usual, they have these stickers on here, which I don't know what those mean. They, I've seen them on like everything I buy from GameStop. Let me know down below if you know what those mean. And then looking at the controller, it's very glossy, uh, which means to me that this thing has been used a lot. Um, the joysticks actually don't look too bad. I don't know if they replaced them or what, uh, but looking at the back, you can kind of see there, there's tons of scratches all over that. And those look like magic eraser scratches to me. So it looks like, I guess, to clean it. I don't know why, but to clean stuff, they just take Magic Eraser to it and, and scrub like as hard as possible. All the buttons at first glance seem to seem to work fine. We'll test it out later, of course. All right, next up we have our digital PS5 here. And this already looks better than the last one because all of this foam is actually intact. The last one I bought, the foam was like broken apart and the console was just laying in the box. Now, let's take a closer look at this. And, oh, yep, definitely. Oh man, they definitely took Magic Eraser to this. First of all, there's a ton of like cardboard dust all over this. I don't know why that always happens with GameStop consoles, but it's like coated in this cardboard dust. And there's also some other weird stuff going on here, but yeah, I definitely use Magic Eraser. You, it's hard to tell on the white, so the white surface because it's matte, but if you look here in the front, ooh yeah, oh yeah. They definitely used good old Magic Eraser there. It doesn't look the worst because at least, at least it appears that they wiped in one direction instead of just like scrubbing it back and forth. So it, it actually turns out to be a, a decent looking pattern, um, but it's still uh, obviously not great when they take a, a magic eraser to a, a glossy surface, just not the best. Then we have a pink sticker down there. I don't know what that means. Now looking at the top, uh, same deal. Got a magic eraser. Again, gonna be very difficult for you to see, but I can see it all over um, just streaks. It looks like they went like this all the way back and forth. And again, it has more of the cardboard dust. And then if we look at the back here, let's see what they did here. And uh, yep, you use Magic Eraser on the back piece as well. And this one feels very abrasive. I don't know why. Like, what what is the point in doing a Magic Eraser on this back piece? Like, it can't be that dirty or disgusting that you need to use a Magic Eraser on it. I just, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, but it's the, it's the GameStop way. And then looking down here, we can see when it was manufactured. And it says September 2022. So this console is actually not terribly old uh so i don't know what the issue with it was if you don't know usually refurbished stuff from gamestop means it had some sort of issue where it was very dirty uh gamestop has two categories they have used and refurbished uh used typically means that somebody traded it in it works fine they just resell it as is uh, refurbished means there's something wrong with it or something that needed to be opened up and cleaned and, and fixed or whatever uh i don't know exactly how gamestop does it but um those are typically the two differences which to be fair that's kind of how it should be in all retro businesses that's the problem with with, with dk oldies is that they call everything refurbished even though it's not refurbished but let's go ahead and plug this console in turn it on see if it works and uh then we'll open it up so i have everything plugged in but let's go ahead and turn this thing on see if it works. It's kind of odd seeing a digital PS5 because there's no button to eject a disc and um, it's very quiet. Wow, because there's no disc drive. Like 
making noises. So it's extremely quiet. That's pretty cool. And now let's go ahead and see if it'll show up on the screen. And I'm hoping, I, I've had bad luck recently with the uh, GameStop consoles where they smelled like, they all smell like cigarettes. I'm hoping that's not the case here, but of course we shall see. We successfully connected to the internet, so we don't have a uh, banned console this time, which is good to see. Let's go ahead and check our system storage. Make sure they didn't leave in a M.2 SSD. They did not. And uh, cool. Well, it would have been cool if they left one in. Now let's go ahead and uh, connect to the PlayStation Store and I'll download some games. So I had to update the console. I also just downloaded Astro's Playroom. I run a test out some controls now, make sure the vibration, make sure the adaptive triggers work, all that good stuff. All right, well, I can say that the, uh, the sound works in the controller. It's extremely loud. All right, vibration works. Adaptive triggers appear to work here as well. I forgot they have this nice little thing at the beginning so you can test everything easily. Motion sensor works as well. It's always a always a cool, cool sensation to shake your controller and feel the little Astrobots bouncing around inside of there. <sighs> Alright, so I played Astrobot for quite a while. All the buttons work, no problems there. Uh, I downloaded Apex Legends because my editor Danny made me and wanted to show off his skills. So we have this downloaded and he set the dead zone to, to, to absolutely nothing. So you can see a little bit of stick drift here. Apparently this is normal, like a little bit worse than a factory controller. I don't have a factory controller to compare it to right now, like a brand new one. Um, but according to my editor, Danny, this is a, a, a very good amount of stick drift. So if you don't like that, go ahead and blame him. Console works fine, connect to the internet, uh, plays games, obviously no disk drive to test. The controller works, it's a little bit like, it just feels old and used, but you can tell by looking at it. Um, now I looked very closely at the D-pad and I can see a lot of grime in there. So we're gonna open up the controller as well and take a look inside of that and see what it looks like. Um, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're gonna start by opening up the console first. Let's go ahead and take the plate off. Definitely feels like it's been opened before because that plate came off very easily. Now looking just inside of the fan here, doesn't look bad at all. All right, that face plate is off as well. Looks really nice. Oh, you can you can see some of the uh, magic eraser there. Uh, hopefully you can see that. I'm not sure if you can in the, in the camera. Looking at the fan again, doesn't look too bad. And um, let's see, uh, has this even been taken apart? Like looking at this, like if this had been taken apart, that sticker would probably be gone. That one would probably be gone as well. I mean, I guess they could pull it up and reapply it. I'm skeptical that this thing was opened. So the first thing we'll do here is take off this little plate, which is where you can put an M.2 SSD to expand your, your internal storage. And you can see there is no SSD there, as we already knew. Now let's go ahead and take off these little pieces right here. All right, yeah, so that piece comes up and uh, just blocks, you know, that little cable right there. I guess that could have been peeled up and put back because it looks exactly the same. So that, that's that's plausible that that was, that was taken off. Now this one, uh, I'm not so sure about. All right, yeah, so to peel this one up, I had to get at it with a, uh, a flathead screwdriver, and then when you peel it up, it leaves this little, uh, kind of like the shapes kind of disappear because it is essentially a warranty sticker. Uh, so I don't think this thing's ever been opened up. So I'm not sure why it was called refurbished. I don't know what they fixed. Maybe something on the outside. Maybe, maybe the outside was dirty and they wiped it down and called it refurbished. I don't know, but we're gonna open it up and see if it's see if it's dirty on the inside because knowing 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 GameStop, something on the inside is gonna look weird. All right, so I got the fan out and the fan does look very clean. Now that doesn't tell the whole story because the last time I bought a PS5 from GameStop, I opened all, up the whole thing and the fan looked really good like this one, but the insides were caked in cockroach stuff. So um, yeah, let's keep going. All right, take this plate off. Looks good under there. Uh, motherboard looks good so far. Now let's go ahead and take the other side off as well. All right, so I got the entire PS5 motherboard out. This side looks good as well, no dust down there. Now let's go ahead and flip this over. We got our power supply and heat sinks, and I'll, I'll show a clip on the screen of the last PS5 I got from GameStop. That one was filthy down here. This one looks perfect. Like I, Honestly, I'm not sure if this PS5 was ever really used because it didn't seem like GameStop had actually opened this up, uh, but it looks very, very clean inside. So I'll, I'll give GameStop the credit for that. Maybe they opened it up and cleaned it. Uh, but I think I think they just got lucky. So I've actually decided that I want to go all the way down to the liquid metal on the PS5. If you don't know, PS5 has liquid metal instead of thermal paste. Uh, but I just took this metal piece off. And by the way, if you're ever taking apart a PS5, this thing takes a lot of force to pull off. Now let's go ahead and uh, take a few more screws out and see if we can get down to this uh, liquid metal. All right, so all those screws off. I think I'm down to where I need to be to get to the liquid, liquid metal. I don't see any more screws. I think I just gotta lift this top piece off, hopefully. Uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll find out. And yep, there it is. So you got some liquid metal there. Let, let me let me zoom in so you guys can see this. So I'm zoomed in all the way now and you can see the, the liquid metal here spread across this heatsink. 
Now you can see it's a little bit pulled on that side right there. I'm not sure if that's a big deal or not. I think if it was warm, it would actually slide down if I were to slide it. And then if we look at the chip here, we also have our liquid metal and it seems to be applied pretty evenly. Uh, again, it's kind of pulled up on the side, but I think that'll resolve itself when I, um, when, you know, you put it back together and it, it heats up and starts transferring. Um, I don't know too much about liquid metal, to be honest, but I also want to take a look at everything else on this board. I am curious to look at the HDMI port and all the other ports here. I don't see anything that's been replaced. Uh, if the HDMI port had been replaced, there'd probably be some like flux and some other stuff there. So let's put that console to the side now and open up the controller because I, I took a little, I was able to see a little sneak peek of the dirt inside of this thing by looking through the cracks and I think we have some nice surprises here. So let's go ahead and uh, take the controller apart. Yeah, you can already see there, I'm pulling up the uh, the faceplate here. Real grimy on the edge right there. And there, we'll, we'll, we'll take a little closer look at that in a second once I get this all the way off. All right, so I got this faceplate off and the faceplate itself is not too bad. There's a little bit of dirt and grime. Let's go ahead and get to the controller where you're going to see most of the dirt and grime. So yeah, very, uh, very grimy around, along the edges there, especially down, down there, which I'm not too surprised about considering the fact that this controller looked very well used. It's, uh, let's keep taking it apart because I really want to get down to the D-pad because I saw, I saw a lot of dirt and grime down there. So let's keep going. So I got the back of the controller off now and yeah, definitely very dirty there. I think this person had a cat because I see a lot of uh, either or either uh, eyelashes or, or cat hair. Now looking at here doesn't look too terrible. I mean, you got some grime down there around the uh, around the triggers, um, but uh, of course, actually, yeah. And there's some more some more hair in here. It looks like cat hair or something. But of course, let's keep going. I really want to get down to this D pad now. All right, I think I finally got down all the way. So we're down to this part of the controller. Uh, again, you can see some dirt and grime there. Now, here is the the piece where. D-pad is yeah we got some like cat hair and dirt in there and if we take this piece out oops oh yeah definitely very grimy around the outside I'll take some photos of it and show it on the screen but very grimy I'm sure these buttons right here will be the same oh yeah Oof. I mean it's not like awful but uh somebody has definitely put some hours into this controller and I guess it's kind of questionable like oh yeah you can see it there around the edges too or just like the, the holes. So yeah, the controller is pretty dang grimy. And honestly, I think it's up for debate whether or not the controller should be opened and fully refurbished as much so as the console, because obviously the console is the most important part. Now, there are some cases where a controller that's this grimy could cause issues with the buttons and that sort of thing. But um, I think they should have cleaned it more than they did. Now, should it be fully opened and cleaned component by component? I don't think so. But um, I'll leave that up for debate and you guys can discuss that in the comments. But overall, I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10 refurbishment because the console is very clean. It works fine. Really, the only reason I'm knocking it down is because this should be should have been called a used console. They didn't refurbish anything. Um, I mean, the console was never opened up. And honestly, all they did was scrub down the outside with the magic eraser, which automatically loses three or four points in my book. So let me know down below what you guys think. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.